DLC characters I think are great because they do keep the game uh, obviously changing. Um, anytime you're adding even one character, it sort of changes the overall meta in terms of what are your opportunities with picks, counter picks, how, how do different characters perform against others. Um, and of course, as we saw with the Wii U version, the team was uh, very active with uh, balance patches and things like that. So I think if you're a, a competitive player, there's number one, a lot to dig into already. And then as uh, the game continues to, to progress and the players continue to progress, you're gonna see a lot of, I think, shuffling in terms of tier lists and uh, and things like that. And one of the nice things is that, particularly with the Wii U version, um, we did see a lot of variety in terms of who you was being played at a competitive level. And did who we? Was, didn't we? <laughs> did we? It seemed like uh, it was Bayonetta this and Bayonetta that at the end of the Wii U. Uh, maybe towards the, the latter part, but uh, certainly in the first couple of years, there was, you know, oh, nice. Uh, a lot of good variety between Diddy Kong, uh, Zero Suit Samus, you know. Um, I want to actually tease that out a little bit. You bring up the competitive side of Super Smash Brothers, and so much of what the scene is was made via the grassroots. People getting together, their shared love for Melee, shared love for these titles, uh, and bringing them to fighting game tournaments. What do you see Nintendo's role in the competitive scene? Is it just as a financial backer for these tournaments, or do you want to be holding more first-party things, maybe in the same vein as some of the Splatoon things that have been happening lately? I mean, we've, we've had uh, some involvement with the tournament scene for a little bit now. Obviously, we've done some of our own tournaments, starting really in 2014 with the Super Smash Brothers Invitational for Wii U that we held at E3. Um, and I think that was kind of a, a first step for us. And, in what our involvement can be and the types of things that we do. We really view our role as kind of being there to help the scene grow as much as possible. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, it's really been created by the community and built up by the community, and it comes from that community passion, and that's something that we don't ever want to lose. Uh, we don't want the community to feel like we've ever stepped in and, and sort of, you know, tried to take something that's really theirs. Um, We'll continue to look at where we have opportunity to do some of our own tournaments like we did uh, with this game at E3 last year with the Invitational. What really um, turned the key? What unlocked your interest in, in being more involved in the competitive scene? I think it was just the passion of the fans and, and really wanting to help them uh, kind of channel that passion. And Oh, very nice. <laughs> they were pocket toed. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. When I was unlocking Peach, she got me three times in a row with that toad. It's got to be a good thing. But yeah, you were saying about your involvement. Yeah, but it's it really is, I think, from our perspective, is about trying to help people come together, enjoy the games, play the games, have fun competitively in the community that that kind of really spawns and, and develops. Do you have any specific players or uh, or tournaments that you follow avidly? Uh, actually, I follow quite a bit of tournaments on a fairly regular basis. Um, you know, especially Genesis being one that's uh, you know very very big for Smash, including games like the N sixty four game. Even mm -hmm. um, you know, from a player standpoint, I am a I'm a big fan of uh, Amsa, uh, primarily because he is. A Yoshi player, and I'm a Yoshi player. Uh -huh. uh, I also play a fair amount of Pikachu, so uh, I'm, I'm always hoping to see uh, Esam do well. Uh, but uh, and then actually last night uh, ended up uh, seeing Hugs at uh, at an event after the uh, the Game Awards, which is always good. Uh, oh. Oh, not quite, not, not quite. Not quite, oh. So that's interesting. So you can get the animation without uh, actually getting the final kill. Uh, that's, yes, if you, uh, you know, with the right kind of uh, DI or air dodge, you can, you can kind of get yourself out of, out of that scenario in, in a very rare occasion. With this huge roster of characters, to get super into the minutia of when does this attack animation start? How many frames do you need for this? This, yeah. this undercurrent of an armor mechanic so certain attacks can go through and certain others can't. It's very much the fighting game style and something that people who approach Super Smash Brothers as a party game mm -hmm. might never need to know, yeah. honestly. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, and even the Ice Climbers is a good example and that's a character, a couple of, you know, I love Ice Climbers, I love to play as Ice Climbers. Um, but at, despite loving to play as them, I've never actually been able to get into the whole desyncing and then how you leverage that to quite, kind of get people trapped into uh, into kind of situations they can't get out of. And uh, I just love the characters. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, Nana and Popo forever. That's right.